All right, real quick, another one, another one here. We got God's simple plan of salvation. The simple plan of salvation is Jesus. It's just, just that. It's just so simple. Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. No man can go to the Father, which is God, except through Christ. This is a simple plan. And the people in the world can't handle simple. What's embedded in us is if it sounds too good, it probably ain't true. And so it's just in us that there's something that's got to be done. It sounds too good. That all we got to do is believe in Jesus Christ, that the Son of God, that God is raised him from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. That sounds too good. In 2 Corinthians 3, 6, it says, Say, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Who also hath made us able ministers of what? The New Testament, not the Old Testament. The old written covenant end in death, but under the new covenant, the spirit gives life. That's why Paul said, for the letter kills. With these words, Paul summarized the key difference between the old and the new testament. The first covenant was based on obedience to the written law, the letter. But the second covenant is based on the blood of Christ and sealed by the Holy Ghost. The law kills. And that the penalty of breaking God's law is eternal death and hell. As God told Moses, the lawgiver, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out their name in the book of life. Even if a person sins only once and in his lifetime, it's the same as breaking all of God's law. For example, if I have a chain. And one little link breaks. Guess what? The whole chain broke. You ain't going to say, well, one link broke. No, the whole chain broke. What happened? The chain broke. While I was pulling, while I was working, while I was fighting, the chain broke. The most important element of the new covenant is the blood of Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, blood sacrifices were required for cleansing and atonement. When the law was broken, blood sacrifices were required. Let's go to Hebrews 8 and 6. But now has Christ obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of the better, what, covenant, which was established upon better promises, amen, better promises, that if you believe, then you can be saved, and that if you ask anything in his name and believe it, it shall be done. Call that which is not as though it was. Ask God and you shall receive. Give it and it will be given back to you. Pressed down, shaken all up and running over. There's been some better promises with the new covenant than there were with the old covenant. The old covenant promise was if you can do these things, you can go to heaven. If you do these things, I'll bless you when you come in, I'll bless you when you go out. Ain't nobody gonna get nothing. You ain't gonna get nothing trying to obey what God tried to give us in the beginning. It just didn't work for us. Everybody sinned. All the way up to Jesus. Everybody sinned. The Bible says that because of one man's sin, Adam, sin entered into the world, and we all got stuck with it, and we couldn't shake it. It kept coming at us. And we didn't even know we were sinning. There was only one commandment. One. And he couldn't keep the one. Told Adam, one thing, don't eat of this tree. And don't give me no excuse. Adam, where are you? I was naked. Who told you? Now, I knew. I would see, I seen you every day. I knew you were naked. And I was all right with it. Did you eat of that tree that tells people stuff? That, that tree that lets you know you all smart. You know some things now. 
one law and couldn't keep it. And from that day on, we all fall. And until Jesus came and died, we were doomed to hell. And he came and redeemed us. Amen. A new covenant he hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and wax old is ready to vanish or be put away. This is chapter 9, verse 1. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinance of divine services and a worldly sanctuary. There were all types of services that the old covenant you had to do. Why? Because you couldn't keep the commandments, so he made up all kinds of ordinance, all kinds of things that needed to be done in order to cleanse you every day. We had to be washed by the blood. The sin that we committed had to be forgiven. And the only way it could be forgiven is something had to die. All the priests had to go in and work out the sins of the people by killing these different animals and putting the blood on them. And, and the high priest had to go in only once a year. And even then, he had to have something tied to him, amen, a rope tied to him. And he had to sprinkle himself with the blood of whatever animal he just killed because something had to die because he know he sinned and he know that the people sinned. So before I go into the holies of holies. I have to go in like this and just in case there was something that God didn't agree with, even though the blood of the of these different animals are sprinkled on them and that that high priest died, they were able to pull them out. Let's go down 11. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Christ will now go before God himself into heaven for us one time. No more. Blood needs to be shed for the covering of sin, to, to get rid of sin in our life. Jesus is the only way. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, if you read it, it said that the veil of the holies of holies that separated us from God was rent, torn half, so that now we, through Christ, can now enter into the holies of holies without being tied, without sprinkling anything else on us, for we have the blood of Christ on us always so that now we can be forgiven. We don't fight to stay saved. We fight for a reward. We fight for our brother. We fight for our sister. We fight to encourage one another. We fight to lift each other up. We fight to save the world for we are heroes. So it is up to us to convince them for they are walking dead men. If Jesus came today, they will burn in a lake of fire, whether they believe it or not. Now, that's not good. Whether they believe it or not. And then God said, warn them of their ways. For if they continue, they will die in them, but your, their blood will be required of you on your hands. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means they may call your name out. They may call your name. And when you think about all the things that you've done, if you're any, anything like me, you would have to say, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Come on, come on. You know I love you because you care. You care, you care, you care. He cares for you. He cares for me. Even before I even done anything good. Jesus, I love you. You know I love you. I love you. I, I, I love you, Lord. Let me get some high pitch.
Goodbye.